everybody. It's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and Star Weekly Angelic Message for the week beginning August 23rd, 2021. So this is one of those weeks where the messages have been coming little by little and we're just going to dive right in after I say, please get on over to gumroad.com slash angel souls if you would like to participate in any of the seven day meditation challenges that I have posted over there. So far we have Metatron, Michael, and Raphael. Also, if you would like a personal reading with me, which could include an angelic reading or an Akashic Records reading, just make sure you mention that in the submission form, head over to angelsouls444.com. The message for this week, are you ready? It's all about wasting time. <laughs> no, hang with me here. I thought this was an incredible message. I'm really excited to get this to you guys because if, I mean, I, I've been doing this too. If you have, especially over your life, if you've been thinking I should be further ahead than I am, I should have accomplished X, Y, and Z by now. Uh, they're even saying now I should be married by now, or I should have had children by now. I should have this amount of money. I should own a house by now. They're wanting to send out this big message to not underestimate the power of soul work <laughs> And the fact that a lot of the events that you have experienced, it's all working towards that. So especially, let's say you're not married, okay? And let's say you're 50 years old and maybe you had a first marriage. Or if you were like me, I had, I always joke that I skipped my first and second marriages. <laughs> Just went right over it and said, no, no, thank you. That's going to, that's going to be a divorce later on. I can see it. So let's just not, okay? Okay. Um, I don't know if you should do as I do, but there you go. That's how I approached it. But if you're, let's say, 50 years old and maybe you got married or maybe you skipped your first marriage and you're sitting here going, I should be with somebody by now. The message here is do not underestimate how much work you have already done on a soul level. The things that you learned from your first marriage or your second marriage or your third or your fifth or sixth, seventh, twentieth, okay? <laughs> if you've been married 20 times, let me know. That's pretty incredible. But the whole idea here is to take this pressure off of ourselves to achieve and accomplish because this is especially now working against us. This kind of goes into everything that was happening in 2020 coming into 2021 where a lot of people were saying, you know, I didn't do anything. I didn't go anywhere. I, I felt like my whole life got put on hold. I don't, I mean, I, I would love to hear how you guys got through that, but uh, I'll offer my perspective on that. I never once felt like my life was being put on hold. Well, I mean, there's a couple of times here and there where I felt like I couldn't do what I wanted to do, but I really appreciated the soul level work and um, sort of the, it's almost like a forced reflection because you're having to be on your own or you're having to uh, break your routine at a minimum, right? You were forced to look at your life, the value of your life, what you put into things, uh, to shift your perspective, presumably, right? Uh, to look at what brings you down and how did you learn to cope? How did you, you know, face your fears? basically. And what they're saying is this is incredibly valuable. And there's a sense here that humanity is not giving ourselves enough credit for that. Okay. <laughs> so we have to look at how far we've come on a soul level. Life is not just about accomplishments. It's not just about how people view you. And I know, especially if you are in a high profile job or whatever, you, you know, you're out there in the public eye, there's a lot of pressure to look like you're achieving, to look a certain way, to look like, you know, really show your power. The times are changing. The times are changing. And I, as a human, don't know what that's going to look like, but that is the message that is coming through. Where, for, for all of us watching this today, these are truly timeless. I put a time on it, but, you know, you can watch it anytime. Uh, please give yourselves a moment today or every day, all right? Just stop and go, what have I learned? How am I different than when I went into that relationship? How am I different now than when I started that project, right? So sometimes, and they're using projects as an example. So let's say it's a work project and you start to get into it and you realize uh, it has to go this direction. It's not going to go the original direction. But the, what they're saying is that people will come to the end of a project 
And it's almost like they're denying everything that they learned in that process or diminishing the value of that learning because they didn't get the outcome that they originally thought they should. Okay, so I think it's almost like we get these assignments and we come to conclusions and this is what they're telling us to watch (laughs) and be careful not to do this. We jump to these conclusions that it should look this way and it should have this outcome. And then as we go through it, we start flowing with what the appropriate lesson is or development or shift within us would be. And then we discard all of that and say, well, no, 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 no. It was supposed to go like this. So now I have to go back to that. Am I making any sense here? I'm not sure if I'm saying this correctly. <laughs> but like, okay, so for example, I, you guys know I'm a writer. Or if you didn't know, hi, I'm a writer. I actually have a master's degree in writing. And I mean, it really was a big part of my life. The first uh, novel <laughs> I tried to write was when I was 13 years old. I mean, I used to sit up all night having writing marathons and the sun would come up and I was exhausted. My hand was cramped from, you know, pen to paper and, you know, going all the way back to when I was like four years old. I would copy the letters out of books. Didn't really know how to write, but I would copy the letters out of books just because I liked the way the ink made the paper crinkly and it made it fold up and, you know, I just love that. And it was a powerful thing in my mind. And here I am at 44 years old. You guys know if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, I've been talking about this Petronia book. What ended up happening was I found myself getting into a mentality and getting blocked because, you know, I I would write a story and I realized my own insecurities about it. And I would go back and reread it and be like, oh my God, this is terrible. I am trying so hard to look like a good writer to like prove myself, to prove my worth. And what's the point? What am I supposed to do with it afterwards? Again, that goes into some personal stuff where I really felt that no one would help me get it published, (laughs) right? Like I would do all my due diligence and get the literary agent, do all of that to put it out there. But I felt like there would be um, some people who would want to block me. But that's a long story. Then recently, I had this whole shift where I was first beating myself up when I'm 44 years old. I started writing when I was a little kid. Mr. Colby, my second grade teacher, read one of my short stories to the rest of the class and said, this is how you do a short story. (laughs) As far as like a second grader could do a short story. You know, what have I done with my life? I started beating myself up. And I'm only telling you this personal example in case you can relate, okay? Um, And I'm hoping that it's making my point. And what I came to discover was that I was jumping to conclusions <laughs> that I, I, you know, I didn't know that that was true, that someone was going to try to block me or get back at me or get revenge on me or like, I don't know, ruin my reputation yet again. Um, I, I didn't know that that would necessarily happen. I don't know what the truth of that situation is. And as I said, you know, when I reread my manuscript, I was trying too hard to prove myself as a writer, but I was also trying to It's coming too much from a marketing standpoint. What would an audience want to hear? Now, some writers actually function from that place. That's how they become really, you know, big, (laughs) right? They, They go along with whatever an audience would be drawn in by. And I thought, well, I can do that, but can I be more authentic to my story, the story that is coming through me and lay it on the page, craft it as best I can, put it out into the world, see whatever happens. Let people connect to it in the way that they will. So here I am for about the 20th time doing another rewrite (laughs) on this book. I don't know what's going to happen with it. But the reason why I'm saying that is there was this big revelation that uh, I had uh, strayed too far from my authentic voice and from what I really wanted to be doing to please others. And I was operating too much from fear. I was also beating myself up saying, I've wasted all of these years. You might be 19 years old watching this and thinking that you've wasted so many years. But you know what? Let me just stay with this example. I've spent the first half of my life healing. Healing major traumas and things that people don't usually live through. That's a big accomplishment. And I bet you can relate to that. I bet you've done the same. So the message here is don't beat yourselves up. And I wish I could give all of you a hug, right? Well, I'm going to give you all a hug right now. Is that okay? Everybody comfortable with hugs? Let me give you a big virtual hug. You have done way better on a soul level than you ever could imagine. And you may not realize that until one day you're free from this body and you're on the other side when it is the right time for you. And uh, you'll go back and, you know, maybe reevaluate what you want to learn next time. 
we have grown exponentially. And it's very easy for us to also look at what's going on in the world as far as policies and such and say, look at this. We're in trouble. And we are. And it's going to be around the environment, guys. It's going to be around the environment. We're already seeing that. It's obvious. A lot of readers have been talking about that for forever. Uh, and people love to take that and say, well, it's Mother Earth. She's upset. Especially in the spiritual community, they'll say Mother Earth is upset and she is you know, fighting back. I'm not saying that that's not true. We're still learning our lessons. What got us here? We got to look at that. It's not enough to just scold everybody and say, use less plastic. That's true. But we have something to learn from that. Okay. And we'll never move on until we understand that. Same thing with relationships. If you're in a dynamic where you're like, what in the heck? You know, are you somebody who was in love with a fantasy? with a fairy tale and then you get into a relationship with somebody who maybe has a high pressure job or whatever they have like status in the world I can't even tell you how many times I get personal radio requests from the ex-girlfriends of celebrities okay 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 I see it I, I've been able to observe this and they have that shift and that understanding of I wanted this fairy tale I wanted um, you know to be somebody through somebody Okay, well, that's a great starting point and beautiful to acknowledge that. But now let's look at where did that damsel in distress come from? Where is that conditioning coming from? And let's just take a moment here and just talk in a duality consciousness kind of way where we have male and female. Just, just for this one example here, where a lot of males get trained that they have to be the alpha and women are trained to don't be too strong. Don't be too strong because that will make him feel less than. Do you see what I'm saying? You guys know that narrative. It's a common one. Uh, and that's why I'm using that as an example here. So where are we now? It's going to be messy. We're in a messy place. It's going to continue to be messy. But these are all of these uh, things that we have to reevaluate. We're missing the point. We're missing the point of our existence. We're missing the point of why we're incarnated here. Just because you haven't become a pop star <laughs> or a famous dancer or something like that doesn't mean that you haven't done some immense growing and had a lot of soul success. And that's what it is. We have all been incredibly successful as souls, all right? We have to sort of shift our definition of success. And we have to look at what's behind our choices. This is not fun. It's not... <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm laughing at myself right now because I'm like, oh, boy, I hate doing that. But we have to really um, take that moment if we're going to move forward, okay? And we have to, you, you notice a lot of uh, the duality and things that divide us. I'm right, you're wrong. People even getting delusional about what they know and, and pretending to be experts in things when they're not. That's very dangerous too. It's incredibly dangerous because there's this, uh, we're going to see a surge in this. But again, if we stay level and we are doing this uh, introspection, we'll recognize it for what it is and we can get around it. Okay. Uh, but this whole thing of seeing through people's, uh, I want to, I want to say it's almost like the social media star that tries to make you think that they've got it all together. It's that kind of thing, but you're going to be seeing that out in life. Everyone's pretending like they know when they don't. I know that you're probably sitting there going, what the heck are you talking about? I feel the same way, <laughs> but <laughs> messages come through as they come through. This is what we're doing here. Okay. So does that make sense? Please comment down below if you need clarification on something, because I'm just kind of rolling with this message and trying to deliver it. I think the bottom line here is give yourself some credit, take it easy on one another. Everyone is trying to get through on their soul contract at this time. And we're being faced with some of the hardest, deepest lessons. All right, let's get onto the cards. Okay, so we're going to pull some cards here. And I also brought over, if you guys remember, I handmade cabochons uh, for extra messaging. And I don't use them too often because as you can see, it's kind of hard to <laughs> hold them up to the camera. But uh, you know, I figured, no, I just kind of felt called to use those as well. Let's get to the cards. And we'll use the Archangel Michael deck this week as well.
you're saying the worst thing that you can do is lose hope. To go into that low space. Again, it's that whole first part of the message of I'm not doing enough. I haven't accomplished enough. It's really a time for us to stop and look at that. Where did that narrative come from? Where is this thing that if you're not what the world defines as a success, that you haven't done your duty as a human being? If you notice, like I was saying, I'm a writer. You know, all stories are based on someone's life experiences and relationships and their failures and their triumphs and their failures again and you know all of these things and how they relate and how they heal that's what we write about that's what those movies are about that you watch right okay guardian angel here is the first card out and this is absolutely telling us that we're being guided and i'm telling you guys i understand what it is to get stuck in a situation or get stuck on someone, or get stuck on an idea of I should look like this, or I should be this, and what all, all that entails. Okay, I totally get it, and I can empathize with that. But when we're willing to clear, and I would encourage everyone out there to be doing clearing through meditation, you'll find that certain messages start coming through to you. I was thinking of a relationship. And this past week, for whatever reason, Tori Amos's uh, some sort of fairy tale kept playing in my head. That's from like the early 2000s. It was on loop in my head. And then I found myself hearing stories about people and their relationships and how they got caught up in the fairy tale of it. That's why I was using that as an example. It's very, <laughs> it's a very fresh example. And uh I started to realize that's what I was getting hung up on. Again, it goes down that road of uh, that damsel in distress. I started heading down the road of people who did that before me and they have this entire time been sharing their story with me and it was a message to me to watch out to not do that for myself. It gets complicated, guys, because it's very easy on the surface intellectually to say, yeah, I know that. I'm not stupid. But why am I pulled to that person? Why am I pulled into this situation that I know eventually, if it's a work situation, eventually is going to burn me out or I'm going to be controlled or I'm going to have to, in some cases, people have actually had to sacrifice their integrity to get to a certain place. Why do I get sucked into that when I know ultimately that's not going to be my happiness? That's what this guardian angel card is talking about here. Okay. This is definitely saying we're, we're, they're with you. We're guiding you. Please listen to us. Please listen to us. This is going to be one of those things where people you thought were the enemy, you know, they're growing too. And I know that's weird. Some of you really don't like that, especially if you're caught up in all the research and the behind the scenes. And you might say, no, we've determined this person to be evil. And that's it. They're really cautioning us against that. Don't jump to conclusions because some of them are, it seems, healing. And yet you want to not just get sucked into that either. So be discerning, critical thinking, okay? Listen to your instincts as well. Yeah, this know-it-all attitude. They're saying we all get into this know-it-all attitude. I mean, I've heard some crazy things where people think that they're experts when they're not. Um, Especially with everything that's going on in society, okay, <laughs> I'm going to be careful what I say here, you know, I always am, uh, but how many people have come out and been like, well, uh, you know, I know a little bit about that because of X, Y, and Z. They're not doctors, they're not scientists, they don't have degrees in any of this stuff, but darn if they don't think that they have a right to tell everybody how to be or how to think, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know, it, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing, again, we're going to start really having clarity. I think that's the thing. We're going to have clarity around that. So trust. Trust in the transformation. I should trust. What does that mean? Trust in the steadiness. Okay. So things are evolving even if it doesn't seem like they are. Now that could be good and it can be bad. You know, the earth is subtly changing and has been for years and years and years. And only now, because it's overt, are we seeing it. But this is, in a good way, your transformation is much more powerful than you realize. And on a personal level as well, 
all these subtle changes and shifts. You know, you might think that they're not that profound, but they actually are. Trust that everything that you've been through and everything that you've experienced, all the outcomes that have happened, it's because it needed to. I know. We in spirituality, we love saying, oh, it was all for a reason, you know. <laughs> but they're really driving this home and saying, no, don't get pulled off on this narrative that your life is somehow less meaningful because you don't have as much money or you don't have as much status. Status is the most made up thing in this world. Again, I do personal readings for people, for people that you would not believe, okay? And the stories I hear from them, they learn, you know, they, they strive and they get to that place and then they learn those lessons and turn around and say, hey, I was happier before I had any status. I, I realized it's all an illusion. That my life was just as meaningful when no one knew my name. Remember that. Okay, what else we have? Oof. <laughs> Some of us are going to get stuck in that mindset. Enchantment. See, we get enchanted by a story. We want to live the fairy tale. We want, that's what... That's what's been driving our choices. This is like the equivalent of that girl that wants the bad boy. And then you get him and you're like, uh, how do I get out? <laughs> how do I get away from this person? He's crazy. Uh, <laughs> right? So, or you get enchanted by, you know, friends. When I lived in, well, no, LA and New York. I mean, people who are really, really wealthy, I think I've said this before in previous videos, they would just come right at me. And put their hooks into me and want to own me like I was their comforting little puppy. And on my end of things, because I was working through traumas and self-esteem issues and all of that, uh, I thought, well, this is my value by being there for them. It's codependency, people, okay? And I wasn't living for me. I was enchanted by them because, well, if they're wealthy and successful, they must be doing life right. And I must be doing it wrong. That's the point of this message. That is not true. No matter what you're doing in life, you're doing your soul's contract. You're doing what you came here to do, even if it doesn't seem like it, okay? And nobody out there is any better than you are. Kindred spirits. Here's the other thing. <laughs> How many of us, uh, and I've done this myself, where you end up moving away from, think about maybe high school, when you're in high school. You had true friends. You really loved them. They were kindred spirits. But then the popular kids started, you know, paying attention to you. And you were so enchanted by the idea of popularity that you abandoned your kindred spirits in favor of popularity, okay? It's that sort of thing. And even if, <laughs> if you're sitting there, and you're a grown adult, you're well removed from high school, how many of those things that we learned back then are still in play in your life? This is the time of ridding ourselves of toxic dynamics. We talk about narcissism all the time. Again, going into, you know, people and their delusions, practicing medicine without a license. <laughs> Right? By, by basically telling people this is what you should be. So I just had a card flip out. It says, write about your thoughts and feelings. Thank you for helping me tap into my God-given creativity and wisdom so I clearly express myself and glean insight, blessing, and healing. Yeah, so again, <laughs> it's removing yourself from all these surface-level narratives and definitely distancing yourself from people who are trying to be experts when they have no training or any know-how in that area. Or somebody who... You know, they're not respecting themselves and, and then, you know, they get into a low space and then they start taking that out on everybody else. Uh, yeah, I can go on and on about that, but I'll spare you. I'm already going to be doing quite a bit of editing in this video. That first part, I found myself rambling. I'm aware. So you're going to see jump cuts. Okay. <laughs> People ask me, they're like, what, you know, what do you, what did you edit out there? Please go back and give me that message that you edited out. Okay. Let me just make it very clear. If I edit a video, it's at my discretion, okay? So you didn't miss anything. Please don't think that I'm like trying to withhold some information from you or some 
you know, message from you. It could be that I'm repeating myself or I sneezed or I coughed or I had to stop and wipe my nose or whatever. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'm not hiding anything from you. You don't need to see me wiping my nose. I will take that out. Okay, fine. <laughs> All right. So definitely be journaling this week. I could be a very, whoa, did you get, I don't know if that caught in the lens there. Um, it jumped right out. Make sure you're unleashing some of that internal work and bringing it out on a page. Writing is incredibly powerful. Guys, I have a whole course over at Gumroad, writing for spiritual development. I have that. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't even realize all the courses that are over there. There's a huge library of, of stuff over there. So it says, pay attention to your dreams. Thank you for tucking me into bed tonight and helping me enjoy a wonderfully restful night's sleep. Archangel Michael, I invite you into my dreams as my teacher, guide, and healer. Please allow me to understand this situation. You can describe the situation on a spiritual level and give me guidance. So again, our authentic, true soul selves are trying to talk to us. And guess what, guys? The outside world, what's going on? I, I can't... I can't emphasize enough. It's going to get worse, okay? Now, if you're sitting there and you hear me say that and you're like, oh my God, no, I don't want it to... We're being taught to stop putting our happiness outside of us. To stop trying to craft our lives in such a way that it looks good. But really, there's so much poison underneath. We are having to do a deep clearing. Yes? So dreams, that's tapping into your subconscious mind. What's trapped there? What needs to be sort of cleared out? Okay, so now I'm going to do these little cabochons. And I will create some B-roll so you can get a close-up here. Ooh, got a hand. Ooh, got a lot of them. All right, what do we have here? Great. We have protection. Okay, protection. You're not going to be able to see it again. I'll get you some close-ups. For the Archangels, we have Archangel Shamuel, who's all about higher wisdom, love, the higher heart. This is your authentic self. This is the true path to your soul. The heart chakra, and then um, some people see it as the higher heart. Okay, and that is our access. So here's Metatron, Akashic Records. This is the plan. This is your soul's contract. This is where you've been and where you're heading. Time is not linear, but whatever, okay? <laughs> the way that we would perceive that, okay? So Metatron, Gabriel, nurturance, expression, soul growth, Sandalfin, right? Yeah, Sandalfin, who is the brother of Metatron, being grounded, being in tune with Mother Earth, okay? So those are the archangels that we have. And then the message ones are time. I just said time is not linear. And then we have truth, the truth of time. The truth of time. Remember, I was saying right from the top of the video that a lot of us are getting into this scramble. And part of they're saying what's happening mentally for people is that they might feel like we're running out of time. And in a certain sense, we are. We are out of time as far as helping this earth. Okay? We are out of time. Step up. <laughs> Step up. Okay? There are diseases and viruses trapped in ice. And if that melts... Check with the scientists. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but many of those are things that we've never seen before. Guess what? We don't have treatment for it. Research that for yourself. Don't take my word for it. It was something that I heard of and it definitely sparked me awake. But do your own research. Okay, so the truth of time. And of course, we had that protection. And then speak, which goes in with Gabriel. <laughs> okay, and this is speaking the truth to yourself to yourself. Don't go speaking to other people and saying this is how you need to be. We have openness. We have angel yet again, which goes in with that guardian angel uh, card. We have grounded, which is sandalfin and release. <sighs> We're protected as long as we accept the protection. We cannot lie to ourselves or each other anymore. We cannot give in to division. And I can tell you right now, I've never been a political person. But uh, I had certain belief systems that would align with maybe a specific, you know, <laughs> kind of middle going towards another area. <laughs> I want to be careful here. And I started to watch. Let me put it this way. People are becoming unhinged. 
unhinged. The people I thought I would align with, I'm like, I don't align with you anymore. You're just out there trying to scare people and control them. Just because you, ooh, I, I could go on and on about this. You guys want to talk narcissism. There it is. Alive and well. Beating. Oh, God. No. No. The truth is in you. Time as we know it. Yeah, for certain things, it's time for us to look at it and to speak the truth of it. But time is not linear. You have not wasted any time in being human. Everything that you have experienced, even the most mundane things, have contributed to your growth. It's a complicated message here, but I know you get it. (laughs) Make sure you take this seriously. Make sure you take this seriously. Look within. And please don't do this thing of, I'm doing it and I'm seeing it and this is how I've learned. This is what we're all like trying to be good little students, especially in spirituality. Look at me. I'm a good little student. I did my meditation. We have to do more than go through the motions so that we look like we're doing it. You can't fool the universe. And time is up in that sense. All right. So we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.